Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Amber here as per. Um, so, shock horror, I still have not come on my period. Um, so today, I figured my video for you all would just kind of be about all the things I've done to prep for my next round of IVF. So if you are new here, thanks ever so much for joining us. Please do make sure that you pause this video right now and make sure that you subscribe to this channel. I upload every Tuesday for you. Uh, so, <laughs> Yeah, it's all been a bit weird to be honest. I think I said last week, like, I didn't mind if Aunt Flo decided to hold off a little bit uh, on the basis that I was going away at the weekend. So we went to Wales um, and then drove to Snowdon and did the big zip wire over that, which was great. It was really, really good fun. But because of Storm Kira, uh, which seems to have given us a good old battering over the last few days, we couldn't actually do the main one. So we only did the two slightly smaller ones, still big nonetheless, still. Rather scary nonetheless, however, um, obviously it didn't go as fast as it would have done any other day because the storm decided that it was going to blow on us, um, meaning it slowed us down, so that was really great. But it was a brilliant weekend, I had more wine than I care to admit, um, but generally it was a great weekend. So, as of like Sunday, I was like, right, okay, come on, you can come anytime now, and obviously she's not. Last night I was getting really quite bad pains and so I thought she was on her way but obviously not um so instead what I've done is I've kind of gone shopping and put together a load of different things that are going to help me for when she does arrive and just for the general IVF saga if you like so without further ado grab yourselves a cup of tea and then let's sit down get all cozy and talk about all things IVF as per Hi guys, welcome back. Hope you've all got your cups of tea, you're all sat down, you're all nice and comfy. Um, so, let's get on, shall we? It's a bit of a haul. It's not quite a haul because, you know, there's about 5,000 different shops all blended into one. Um, only got two bags because, you know, saving the environment and all that. So, I'll just kind of go through with you what I've bought, why these are going to help me with the IVF, so you can kind of see what I do to prep for my IVF. Um, so, I will start off with the basics for you. So... Um, I'm more of a tampon kind of girl. This is a bit TMI, I do apologise. But when we are going through IVF, I don't, because it's obviously not great to be shoving things here, there and everywhere. Um, obviously when you go for your scans, you can't have anything in. So, I purchased a couple of these. You can never have too many. Um, it's not winged. I always find that I have a bit of problem, a bit of a problem, should I say, with winged ones. And they just end up getting really wrapped around my knickers and it's really not very nice. Um, but these are nice and soft and unscented, so really pleasurable, pleasurable, oh my god, they're not dildo. Let's ignore that. Um, so they're really just good for you. So there you go. Um, that is prep number one, as I'm sure I'm going to need plenty of these. And, you know, if the pains I'm getting are anything to go by, this is not going to be an easy one for me. So, they are first on my list of things you need for your IVF prep, because... You do, and let's be honest, you know, after your egg collection, you might bleed a little bit and all the rest of it. So, um, the second thing I bought was myself a nice little face mask. I think, to be honest, it's really stressful. The whole thing is really stressful. When you start your injections, it's really nerve-wracking, you get really scared about it, you obviously then have your collection, your two-week wait, all the rest of it. So this is just when I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed by it all. I can just sit back, chill, and relax with a nice little face mask. Uh, face mask even um, so this is a Garnier one I believe and it's super hydrating and anti-fatigue and I think fatigue is a really big thing when you're going through the IVF you're so tired I think you look really tired um, so I think this will just do me a little bit of good just to inject a bit of moisture and make me feel a bit more awake um, so this is the moisture bomb and it's lavender and high hi hyaluronic hyaluronic acid why can't they just give things simple names um, so that will be something that I will definitely be getting on really quite quickly I think as soon as flow is here I'll be shoving that on my face the next thing I bought was from Lush so I do quite like Lush I think they have some really good things my favorite is Snow Fairy but obviously time of year is now all wrong I should have stocked up um, but the first thing I bought was this so sleepy shower so this is actually a shower bomb rather than a bath bomb I have never ever used one of these before, but my thinking was that when I don't want to be spending ages in the bath and I just want something quick before I go to bed and I've had a long day, I'm tired, I'm aching everywhere, the injections are getting the better of me, I thought I'd get one of these. So 
it smells beautiful so it looks like a little cloud like you can see crossed with a sheep so this is the sleepy one so you kind of just hold it under your hand while the shower's running it foams up it's got fine bits of oatmeal in it that you can then exfoliate yourself with and i just think it's gorgeous and it smells beautiful i don't think it says what it smells of no it doesn't but it smells really good so that is a nice little shower bomb that i've bought myself so you can see if i flip it over there you go sleepy is that the right way around yeah <laughs> there you go i just think it's really important when you're going through this that you do sit and kind of give yourself some me time um as it is really it is just stressful and you're tired all the time you're pained you're waiting for everything that a bit of self-care really wouldn't go amiss and this oh my god it smells beautiful i definitely recommend next on my list wah, whoops i bought myself a bath bomb so i will show you this one this one is a sakura i'm sorry if i'm saying that wrong um obviously we all know how to use bath bombs you just dip it in this one i got because it was quite a i really like ones that make your bath a really funky color i think you know they just look really cool um and obviously I live for doing everything for the gram, but there you go, this one. You can see it's just got tiny little colours splashed into it. And it just smells lovely. It's such a calming smell and I think that's really important when it comes to the IVF. So when Aunt Flo does arrive and I feel like I want to rip my uterus out, I think there's nothing better than a nice hot bath with your nice little bath bomb, face mask on, cup of tea in hand, what more do you need? But that really is beautiful. I think it smells so nice. It's not overpowering. There was one that I really liked the smell of, but it was so strong. And I think sometimes when you are on, really overpowering smells just, oh no, I can't stand it. So I just thought that would be really nice just to kind of unwind after your injections and just relax. A nice little Spotify playlist on the back. Um, so I do actually have an IVF Spotify playlist for when I am feeling a bit crappy and it's just a bit mellow and nice and relaxing and just makes you kind of sit and I love to just sit in the bath with my bath bomb and my face mask and all the rest of it, cup of tea with a Spotify playlist on so I will share the Spotify playlist in the comment bit below, uh, yeah down below so I will share that all for you um, but generally oh I just love it, I think there's nothing better than a relaxing night in and what better excuse than your IVF really, I think ooh, already it's kind of taken a bit of a toll on me like I think we've not even started but I think because my period is now over a week late I'm just getting really anxious because obviously last time this happened none of it went particularly well it all kind of went down the pan and I just don't really want to be in that situation again so I'm just a bit panicky that it's just going to be a repeat of last time and that everything is going to be the same because already it seems to be doing that so I just thought if I prepare and I buy everything ready to feel really calm then when it does come I can kind of just sit down chill go for it and just try and keep some kind of normality and just try and be relaxed in with it um whether or not that actually happens I don't know because I don't seem to understand the meaning of the word relax but I'm hoping that these things will go a long way um in helping me at least feel a little bit more relaxed um, the final thing I got was just a little charity pot. It was only a pound. It's hand and body lotion. I seem to have a collection of these because every time I go into Lush, I seem to buy one. Um, but it's just a pound that goes to charity. So if you do go to Lush, what's a pound? Um, I know we're all saving money, but a pound really is less than a cup of coffee, isn't it? Um, so they're the things that I bought from Lush uh, and Superdrug. So these are the things that are going to just help me chill, have those mellow nights with the Spotify playlist and just relax um now we kind of went on to a bit of treating myself so last time i went through ivf what i did do was that i bought a lot of floaty dresses and a lot of dresses that were going to hide the blow things that i could wear to london and i wouldn't feel really frumpy in um but would hide the big swelling belly that i had so i think i must have bought three or four dresses but i don't want to rewear them um i want to feel good about myself again so i actually bought a whole new outfit for my transfer so um, if you've not been through this before, you won't know, but with um, egg collection and your transfer, you cannot wear deodorant, makeup, any body lotions. You can't have anything on your body other than your skin. So I found that last time I felt really minging. I didn't feel very pretty. I just felt a horrible, grumpy, frumpy mess. So 
this time I decided I was going to buy a nice glamorous egg collection outfit. Just so I felt a bit better on the way down to London as it was happening and afterwards. So I'm not going to try the dress on just on the basis that A, I don't really have time at the moment, but B, I've not tidied my dressing room, so you're all going to see what a disgusting slob I really am. Um, so, I'm just going to show you it, and then when I actually have my vlog, you can see it. So it's a bit different from anything that I'd go for usually. So it's from the top, it's from Topshop, um, and it's Topshop Boutique range. I bought it for £20 down from... 69 so it's an absolute bargain i will link it in the description box so you can have a proper look at it i don't think there's any in stock online but if you want it then you can keep your eye out i did get it in a size big uh it looks huge like look um <laughs> i look like a little pea hello my name is pea head um so i'm so weird i'm so sorry it, you can see here, so it's just like a t-shirt dress and it's got the black little cami over the top um, which ties up behind it but I just thought that's it would be really good for um, my collection because A, like I say, it's floaty, you can hide the bloat but it's also something that afterwards I can kind of loosen you can kind of wear it as tight as you want or you can wear it really baggy so that was my thinking behind that and I just thought I'd treat myself, I do really like it um, it is a bit different to something, like I say, that I'd usually go for but I don't think for £20 you can really go too wrong. So that is my little egg collection, not egg collection, my transfer outfit. But I think I might wear it to one of my scans too. Nice and floaty and comfortable. Not too thick, nice and cool. So there we go, we'll have a bit of a winner of a day there. And then, this is where I kind of got a bit OTT and decided that I really did need a whole new outfit rather than just a floaty dress which was my intention. So let's get that back in without getting it all creased. I also bought myself a nice little bright pink headband, which doesn't look good now because I have like Mount Everest on my head. I do apologise for my hair today, this really isn't my best look, but there you go. So I've bought myself a nice little pink headband. Uh, this was down to £3 from 10 so I went all for the sale. Um, but yeah, I really like that. I think it's really cute. I do like a headband. Everyone knows I like a headband. If you follow me on Instagram, which I hope you do, then you will see how much I love a headband. But usually I go for mustard. So branching out to pink with the blonde, which it will be very shortly rather than ginger. Um, and that can stick on my head as we go. And then we all know that I love a pair of Pat Butchers. So to go with that, just to make me feel that little bit extra glam, again, these are down to three pounds from 12 pound 50, so absolute bargain. Here you go, here are my new Pat Butcher earrings. So really lovely in gold, with lots of little gemstones in them, but there you go, that is my transfer outfit. I figured if I felt better about myself, maybe I'd feel better. And that seems to be my mantra at the minute, that if I make a bit of an effort with myself and I look after myself, then my mood seems to be a bit lifted. I don't feel minging, I don't feel a horrible mess. So buying myself some Pat Butcher earrings made me feel like my IVF might work. God knows why, God knows what my logic is. I'm basically coming on here and saying to you, to prepare for IVF, spend a bug load of money. That's not really what I'm getting at. But for me, I just thought last time, it made me feel better going to London every morning, dressed up, feeling a bit glam, if you like. I'd never go OTT, but you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with ever being overdressed. So for me, I was very much like, right, well, I'll make an effort, feel a bit better on the way down there. I don't feel scruffy, I don't feel minging. Whereas when it came to my collection and my transfer, I really did. I felt awful because I couldn't wear deodorant and I couldn't wear anything. So I literally just shoved on a pair of joggers and a jumper um, and I looked so scruffy, it was horrible. And I don't think that helps in how you carry yourself and how you feel. So for me, I thought, right, this time I'll make an effort. So I bought myself a little outfit, cost me less than 30 pound in the sale, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, so I have obviously got my pads, my face mask, my shower bomb, my bath bomb, my new outfit. So for me, that's it now. I've got my nice relaxing bath. I'm going to feel all zen. I'm going to feel all relaxed and it's going to be great because my period's going to start and I'm not going to worry at all. 
she says, knowing full well that as soon as Aunt Flo comes, she's going to go into absolute meltdown because she already is on the basis that Aunt Flo isn't here. And oh my God, what if it's just a repeat of last time? Everything is just going... Like seriously, like poor Marco, I've been really horrible to live with. Um, but we won't tell him that I admitted that ever at any point. Um, and we'll just let him believe that it's all his fault because, you know, why not? It's not my fault. And the final thing I bought, so I have shown you on Instagram, I've got my jog on book by Bella Mackey uh, that I'm reading at the minute that I'm loving but then on top of that I showed you all on Instagram the other day I bought, uh, bought a book by Sarah Knight that everybody seems to have already read except me which is the life-changing magic of not giving a fuck uh, I feel like that is a book that I really need because I think I give too much of a fuck about too many things so that I've kind of started and I'm kind of picking up and putting down in between jog on but I'm not very good at reading two books at once but I figured during the transfer to try and take my mind off things I would just stock up on books. One of my New Year's resolutions this year was that I was going to read more because um, it is something I love doing and I just don't seem to make the time to do it. So I've got my jog on book to finish, I've then got this book but then I also bought this book um, which is called Eleanor something, that's it, Eleanor and Park. Um, so it seems like a bit of a little teenage kind of romance book. Um, and it just looked good. I'd seen a few reviews on it. I liked how bright the colour was, uh, cover was, and I just thought it made me feel a bit better. Um, so I won't sit and read you the blurb. Actually, yes, I will. Why not? So it's saying Eleanor is the new girl in town, and with her chaotic family life, her mismatched clothes, and her unruly red hair, she couldn't stick out more if she tried. Park is the boy at the back of the bus. Black t-shirts, headphones, and head in a book. He thinks he's made himself invisible, but not to Eleanor. Never to Eleanor. Oh, how romantic. Slowly, steadily, through late night conversations and an ever-growing stack of mixtapes, Eleanor and Park fall for each other. They fall in love in the way you do the first time, when you're young and you feel as if you have nothing and everything to lose. And it just made me think, oh, I just want to read this book and feel a bit nostalgic about when you're a teenager and there's that boy that you have a crush on and late at night you're texting away, um, or you're on your MSN and you're chatting and you're chatting until four o'clock in the morning and you're hiding under the duvet in case your dad comes in um, and tells you off. And um, that's basically like the story of my teenage life. So I just thought it'd be a nice little book just to lose myself in. Nothing too serious. I've got a Jodie Pickout book at, uh, downstairs as well um, that I've not yet read that I really, really want to. She is my favourite author ever. So to me, my prep for my IVF is make myself feel good, have things ready for the worst period in the world and have things that can take my mind off things over the two-week wait. Um, I really have fallen quite lucky in the sense that because it's been delayed, I will have another payday this week before all my scans, next week even, which kind of coincide with all my scans and everything, hopefully, she says. Um, but I did a bugger load of overtime, so I'm a bit, I will be a bit more flush than I usually am, which means that two week wait, I am gonna be planning things in that I wouldn't necessarily usually do. Um, but at the same time, I don't wanna stress myself out and I don't want too many things to do. So for me, books were the answer um, because I thought I can sit there, lose myself in them, that's not an issue. But I hope this all made sense. I do feel like I've just kind of waffled on at you a little bit. Um, I had planned on this video this week kind of being my injections and all the rest of it, but obviously that never happened um, because my period still isn't here. Um, and other than that, the only IVF related thing that's going on at the moment is me ripping Marco's head off all the time because I'm anxious. So. It is scary and people keep sending me messages and wishing me luck and all the rest of it. Whereas at the minute, I just, I still kind of feel quite indifferent. Like I still kind of feel nothing towards it, but I'm getting to a point now where I feel a bit scared that everything is gonna go the same way it did last time because it just seems to be history repeating itself um, in the sense that I'm still so late. And yeah, so this time I just thought I'd sit down and I'd show you all how I prepare as that is a question I get asked an awful lot. So my answer is, looking after yourself, finding things to do that are going to take your mind off everything and keep you busy. So in my case that's reading because I can lose myself in a book, which I can't necessarily do in other things. If I'm sat on my phone I'll end up googling maternity wear and stupid things like that because I'm an idiot. Um, so that is it from me, I think. Um, like I say, I will link my little playlist down below. It's nothing amazing, it's not your party bangers, it's not anything like that, it's just songs that I quite like to listen to when I'm in the bath so I can chill out. Um, but that's it really, so hopefully next week's video will be my first lot of injections. Um, but I obviously can't promise anything because if last time there's anything to go by we've still got three weeks to wait, so we'll see, but 
I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's kind of given you some insight into A, how panicky my mind is and how much my mind is going like this at the minute. But the things that I have kind of got to prepare myself for this round of IVF. So I am sorry that this is a bit skittish and it's a bit all over the place. Um, but please do make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Uh, head over to my Instagram, follow me on there. But also make sure that you like this video and leave me a little comment. Uh, and I hope you have a fantastic week. And I will see you next week, next Tuesday, 5 o'clock new video, hopefully my injections, but if not, I'll think of something wonderful for all you. Um, I think it's Valentine's Day this week and I am going to a Valentine's Day ball. Um, I have had quite a few questions on Instagram about my makeup, especially when I do my eyeshadow. I'm going to a proper black tie ball, so I've got myself a proper dress and all the rest of it, so I might do a little get ready with me, I might do both. I don't know, just make sure that you've subscribed and either way, notifications turned on, whatever I upload, it will be here, five o'clock next Tuesday. So yeah, have a good week everyone, um, wish me luck, hopefully Aunt Flo decides to pay a visit, but we shall see. But yeah, I'll see you next week, bye!